if Deku had a candy quirk, had the candy quirk, this is a what if I just figured I might as well do. Alright, what if Deku had the candy quirk? Deku, when he was born, was quite odd. When they looked, looked at Deku, they, uh, well, were kind of curious because as soon as he was born, he created gummy bears out of his hand. And he was eating the gummy bears when he was just a baby. And literally, Sashi just looks at just looks at the doctor like, "Is this normal?" <laughs> and the doctor's like, "I, I never seen a, ba a baby somehow summon candy and eat it. I, I don't think this is normal. Obviously, it's not." Sherlock Holmes. And and Sashi's like, "Hey, what? This is my first kid. Never had any kids. I don't know if this is normal or not." <laughs> and then literally, the mom laughs a little, but says, "Uh, should we just?" be letting this uh, baby eat candy and yeah they, they just try to grab the candy away from him but uh when they do uh let's just say they grab the candy away from him but the candy bites them apparently the candy is alive and that just freaks them out a little <laughs> yeah they just throw the candy and then it just uh you know stops stops moving and then they look at the candy, and, well, Asashi's just odded out. And the doctor's like, oh my god, this is very rare, but some babies can, people can actually have their quirk while they're born. Like, when they're born, they can immediately have their quirk. I think he might have a quirk. I'm going to run some tests real quick. And so they run some tests on... Midoriya, and, well, they found out something. When they test him, they found out that his blood is actually candy blood. Which is very shocking. It's actually candy blood, believe it or not. And it actually apparently tastes like strawberry, or any color he wants. Which, they were kind of wondering how they found that out. He's like, oh no, I just did a blood sample. And he's like, did, did you eat the blood sample? He's like, uh, uh, oh, anyway. And they're just, like, wondering what the hell this doctor just did. <laughs> and, yeah, the doctor's like, also, apparently, he can make candy from thin air. And he can apparently make it alive, which is odd. I don't know what types of candy he can make, and I don't know if this is going to be useful at all, actually. It seems kind of useless. But, hey, maybe it might grow in power later on, so come back when he's four. So, they take the baby into the car, and all of a sudden, as soon as they get into the car, uh, Asashi starts having cravings for candy, because Asashi, his quirk is called Convenience Store. But he's always craving candy for some reason. So, Asashi in this one, instead of having the fire reading quirk, has Convenience Store. Which he summons a pack of, you know, nerds. Summons those. And once he does, the baby sees this and sees what it looks like. And all of a sudden, before they can know, right when they're about to drive home, the whole car fills with nerds. Literally, Azuka's just summoning nerds out of his hand. And fucking Hasashi is just terrified. He's like, it's a nerd avalanche. We gotta get out of the car. <laughs> John told me this would happen, and Inko's like, who's John? And he's like, uh, uh, let's just get out of here. And, like, they just open the door, and, like, a huge thing of nerds pop out of the vehicle, which, they're just saying, so you know, they're in the middle of traffic right now, and they're just stopped in the middle of traffic, and everyone's watching this. So people will actually stop and get out of their cars, and they're asking what happened, and they're like, uh... My quirk went haywire. They don't want to say that it's Zuku because, well, they didn't figure it would be this powerful. It's powerful, very powerful, but it's also very odd. So they just said Hisashi's quirk went out of control. And it was just like, a, you know, the quirk developing more. Which they could believe, so. People who just went out of their car just went back in their car, just drove off. And, well, Hisashi and Inko just drove home, and there's still some nerds that were in the car, which they had to go for weeks to try to get out. 
which Asashi, honestly, liked that Izuku had a powerful quirk, but it was also a hassle. Because half the times, well, he did surprises when he walked in. Because when Inka was, like, inside of the house one day, and Izuku was about, like, three, Izuku was getting kind of hungry, and, well, Inka didn't make anything currently. Because, while well, she was watching TV. She was about to make something in a few minutes. But Izuku was like, I'm just going to go ahead and make some candy or something. And just so you know, Izuku cannot control the output of how much candy he makes right now. I mean, he's only three. He's just a kid. He didn't expect that much. So, she's like, no, 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 no. I'll make dinner. And before she can even say it, Izuku just ends up trying to make some gummy bears. And all of a sudden, these giant gummy bears pop out behind him. And they're literally moving. And it... Inko was just passed out already. She just passed out because she didn't expect that. A giant gummy bear with fucking teeth. Hell no. Just fucking passes out. And Hasashi just opens the door, looks at the gummy bears, sees that they're moving, and just closes the door, walks out, looks at looks at the home address, and says, like, yep, this is my house. I, I'm just going to go ahead and open the door. Maybe they're gone. He just opens the door and sees that <laughs> the gummy bears are just staring at him now. And Izuku just made another pair of gummy, gummy bears and just ate those. Little mini ones. And the two gummy, giant gummy bears, literally, they just stick there. Like, they're summoned completely. They're just summoned there for a good bit. So he just named them. <laughs> because they're permanently stuck there. He can't really reverse them. He doesn't want to eat them because... Well, they're moving, and that would be kind of weird. Is what Izuku says. So, yeah, they just keep them. They're kind of like a guards for Izuku. <laughs> they can actually speak, too. He names one of them, uh, Barry. And then he names one of them Cherry. Barry and Cherry. Because one of them's blueberry flavored. One of them's cherry flavored. Which they have quirks. The candies he makes have quirks sometimes. If they can move. It's random, really. So, yeah. Izuku is already four, and everyone already knows about his quirk in his, like, kindergarten, and they think it's pretty impressive. Izuku just goes to school. The two gummy bears always stay at the house. They guard Izuku's parents on instinct. And, yeah, some of them... One of them actually followed Hisashi to work, and a lot of his co-workers were like, Why is there a giant blue gummy bear following you? And, yeah, he explained what it was, and they laughed at him, but they also thought that was pretty cool, actually. And, well, Izuku is in class. We're gonna scene cut. Izuku's in class, and Bakugo unlocks his quirk. Has some sparks coming out, and he's like, This is amazing! And Deku's like, that's an amazing quirk, Kachan. And Bakugo being having inflated ego and being the, you know, asshole that we all know him, but we all love him for it, for some reason, I still don't get his appeal. Until, what, the manga. The manga does make him more appealing, though, know, later on. But, yeah, Bakugo essentially just stands up on top of the chair and says, Mine is way better than yours, Deku. He starts calling him Deku, and Midoriya's like, Why would you call me Deku? And Midoriya, Midoriya is like very heartbroken, because his friend just called him useless. And, well, Gachan just said, Because you're a Deku, you're useless. All you can do is produce candy. What use is that? Which all the other kids actually just disagreed, because, well, they're, they're kids. And, well, Azuki can make them candy. They want the sugar rush. <laughs> like, literally, the teacher sometimes catches uh, Azuku doing candy deals. <laughs> like, sometimes uh, Azuku's like, in the corner of the recess area, and some kids walk up to him like, You got the stuff? And Izuku just pulls out, like, a Snickers bar. He's like, I got the stuff. Just He just trades it for, like, a dollar. And, like, some of the teachers catch this, and they're just laughing a little. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, scene cut. So, he's back there, like, everyone's, like, flashbacking to those times where, the, like, Izuku sold him, them candy, and they're, like, defending him, saying, he's not useless. He can make candy. You can make explosions, but, honestly, 
It's not really that delicious, is it? Can you eat your quirk? And survival area, when you're alone without any food or water or anything, can you make candy and eat and survive off of it? No, you cannot. Azuka could survive off of his own blood if he needed to. Or his own mucus, because all of it's candy related. Which basically every body function inside of Azuku is candy related in some way. Whether it comes to saliva, you know, blood, all that's completely candy related. Not his organs or anything, just the blood and stuff. Candy related. And, well, Azuku is like really happy that his class is defending him. And, yeah, they all go out to recess, and Bakugo is like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and beat the shit out of him. So Bakugo just runs up towards Azuku, who's on the swings, pushes him off the swings, and starts charging some little explosions in his hand, and starts trying to fire it at, uh, at Midoriya. Midoriya, however, literally just summons, didn't even mean to summon it, but summons Jawbreakers. And there's these two giant Jawbreakers just like, what, what you doing, bub? And they start, like, beating the shit out of Bakugo. Like, the one on the left is blue. And just punches Bakugo in the face. Like, right in the jaw. And Bakugo's jaw is breaking. And they're just ganging up on him. Like, both of them start big booting him. They start beating the shit out of him. The dog shit out of him. They're folding Bakugo right now. They're four years old. These are, like, little small-ass jawbreakers. But they do a little bit of damage. Like, they're beating the shit out of him. Like, Bakugo is bleeding a lot, like a little bit, out of his mouth. And he's like foaming because he's already unconscious. And then Midoriya says, you guys can stop now. And they both like look towards Izuku and said, summon us when you need us. And unlike the gummy bears, Izuku didn't really make them stay. Because they were more violent. And he found that as a problem. He didn't eat them or anything, but he just like dis-summoned them, de-summoned them. Which she found out he could do later on. He just never did that to the gummy bears because he was attacked, attached to them. To Barry and Cherry. So, yeah. Izuku literally just desummons them. Everyone saw what just happened. And they're like fucking screaming like, He just knocked out the biggest, baddest kid! And they're all like lifting up Midoriya and cheering. And Baku was unconscious. And the teachers, they don't know what happened. They just walk out and they see him unconscious. And all of them say, uh, Bakugo got, uh, Bakugo got cocky, and, well, he ended up, uh, saying he could climb a tree, and he fell down. And they're like, those are not, like, they already know that that's not true. But they figured Bakugo started it anyway. But he had a really good quirk, so they're like, who did this? And they, uh, don't point at Izuku. None of them snitch. They reel with him. They don't snitch. He's the candy dealer. No one snitches on the candy dealer. So... Yeah. They don't know who did it. Because there's no security cameras literally at recess. So, they don't know. Until Bakugo wakes up, like, a few hours later in the, like, you know, in their medical place, you know, the nurse's office, wakes up there and says, Izuku just knocked me out. And he's in disbelief. And the nurse heard this, so the nurse tells the staff and everyone that they call Inko and Hasashi... And they both appear, and the two gummy bear bears appear. Like, they, they literally appear with them. <laughs> and, like, everyone looks at those two gummy bears, like, they're, like, huge. They're about the size of All Might, my dude. These gummy bears are huge. And they're walking to the building. <laughs> and the kids are looking in awe, and they want to play with the gummy bears. They don't want to eat them. They just want to play with them. So... Izuku just looks at Cherry and says, Uh, Cherry, could you play with them? And Cherry just starts, you know, like, you know, piggyback riding them, or making some actual cherry, some actual cherry-flavored candy out of her hands, or well, some cherry-flavored fluid out of her hands. And just giving them some candy, playing with them, playing tag, and all that stuff. And we're going to cut back to Izuku and Izuku's parents. And Barry, who, who literally just tagged along. So, yeah, they're explaining how Izuku apparently 
knocked out Bakugo with two giant jawbreakers, about kid-sized jawbreakers, and they beat the shit out of him. And Asashi and Inko are very disappointed in Izuku. But Izuku says, well, Kachan was trying to beat me with his quirk, which could have very much scarred me. And Izuku is not unintelligent. Because he ate nerds. He, like, summoned nerds and ate them. He didn't know until, like, later on that those increased his intelligence. So, he's pretty smart. And he says, are you guys just going to, you know, make it to where I'm the bad guy because you think he has a better quirk? Well, my quirk knocked him out, so you should be doing the same for me then. Why are you trying to get me in trouble? And the teachers are stunned, and they're like, uh, uh, they're starting to, like, sweat bullets. And Izuku has a camera out, recording all this. But they don't know it, because he has it behind his back, just recording the dialogue. And they say, well, it's because he has a way flashier quirk than you. All you can do is just have candy. It's just an overglorified candy factory. They start saying that to Izuku, and Izuku says, hmm, and you guys probably just lost your job. And they're confused, and they say, yeah, right, kid. Just get out of here, you're suspended for two, for two days. You know what? Not suspension. You're suspended from this school. No, you're expelled. They start changing it, so you're expelled. They expel Izuku, and Inko and Hisashi are disappointed in the school system now because they heard what happened from Izuku. So they go home, and Mit Mitsuki is trying to talk to Hisashi and Inko because she saw her son was injured. But they explain what happened, and Mitsuki is actually pissed off at Bakugo. And scolds him. And apologizes profusely to them. Because, well, he just got expelled. Because of Bakugo. Lying and saying that he didn't do anything. Which, they knew he did something, but he had a better quirk, what they saw. He had a better quirk, supposedly. So... Izuku goes up to his room, they think he's about to cry, but no, 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 he goes on his computer, and he posts it all over YouTube, well, no, RedTube, all over RedTube, and Blitz, and InstaFam, and all of that, and it blows up everywhere, and the school is being held accountable for this, and they have to let Izuku back in, and if they, they're literally being sued a lot. So after Zuku passes the school, and goes into the middle school, well, they're already closed down. And the middle school, like, when he goes in, they they don't want to, like, single him out, or anyone, because they heard what happened. They don't want to mess with Zuku. Because Zuku did that when he was, like, four. Yeah. They don't mess with him. And Zuku's quirk has gotten more powerful. So we're going to go skip... Time skip to the time at Canon. In Canon. Where Azuku walks into class, he sits down, and the teacher and everyone else is already there. He came late, mainly because the teacher is disrespectful to him, so he just disrespects the teacher in this way. So, yeah. Midoriya has great grades. Literally, he doesn't even try anymore. He just eats a pack of nerds, and, well, he's, he's pretty much good. Because he gets even smarter. The only thing is he limits himself to about like a one little pack of nerds a day. Which increases his intelligence about a good bit. Over the years he's about almost as intelligent as Nezu right now. So, yeah. The teacher is already in and so does Azuka just walks in, sits down. And the teacher just starts explaining. Alright, so everyone. Here's your job. Here's your actual what you want to be in the future, but uh, I don't think I should pass these out. He just throws them and just says, Because I know all of you want to become heroes. And everyone flashes their quirks. Izuku flashes his uh, gummy bear, like just makes some gummy bears and starts eating them. And the teacher says, No eating in class. And he's like, Well, technically, this is my quirk. So I'm not really doing anything out of suspicion, and you should get on to them for using their quirks. But me using my quirk is so bad. And the teacher literally just shuts up and ends up saying, Oh, there's two people sign signing up for UA. It's Bakugo and Izuku, which she starts laughing. 
But no, no, no one else laughs. Bakugo laughs at him and saying, You're just an over-glorified fucking candy... Candy machine. You won't be able to beat me. I'll be in your way and you won't. Because you don't even have that much combat skill. Everyone else knows this is a lie because... Izuku has an infamous... Infamous name already spread out. Because, uh... He just ends up... Totally... Like, whenever there's, uh, problems, he summons little gummy bears that help the elderly, that, you know, get cats out of trees. Some of them even combat villains. He makes gummy bears, I do. <laughs> and it's very funny. Imagine this. Like, this really tough villain that, like, some pros are having a, a hard time with. All of a sudden, a gummy bear just sucker punches the villain and just knocks him unconscious. What are the pro heroes going to literally say? A gummy bear just did better than they did. Yeah, so, he does all this stuff. Everyone else knows this, except for the teacher and Bakugo. So they don't laugh at him. They respect him. And Bakugo is just continuously laughing at him, and Izuku has almost had enough. And Izuku says, I will literally make a gummy bear and fold you right now. And Bakugo busts out laughing, saying, Are you going to think a little gummy bear is going to beat me up? Oh, that's adorable. And then Izuku makes... A very small gummy bear, gummy bear, okay? It's about the size of a normal gummy bear. And he literally starts doing a roar cry. He puts it on the table and it does a, his actual desk does a roar cry. And, and Bakugo was like, that's so funny. You think a small little gummy And the gummy bear like sprints after him. Like just sprints and jumps. And runs up to, like just jumps towards Bakugo. And punches him in the eyeball. And Bakugo's like, ah, oh, my fucking eye. And the, the gummy bear starts expanding, getting bigger. And just literally German suplex Bakugo into a seat. And Bakugo's knocked out already. Like, this gummy bear literally just folded him in just two moves. <laughs> and the teacher looked at looked at this and just he was drinking some water and he spit that shit out. He was like, What the fuck was that? I just saw the rising star, Bakugo, just get folded by a gummy bear. Hell no. And he's just checking his eyes. He's like Rubbing his eyes, like, nope, nope, the gummy bear's still there. And then Izuku just, like, uh, shrinks the gummy bear back down and just puts it in his pocket. And just so you know, that gummy bear is known as small ski. He calls it small ski because it can literally change into a small size, but a big size at, at times. And he just keeps that with him. He summons it and desummons it. He lets it do whatever it wants. It usually is really harmless. It protects Izuku at all times. He has two guards towards his parents and one guard towards him. He has a small ski. And Barry and Sherry guard his parents. So Izuku has already folded Bakugo. And Bakugo's followers don't even want to fuck with him. Because they know if Bakugo just got folded by a gummy bear, they're going to get folded by a gummy bear. And that's going to look ridiculous. And just so you know, one of the kids literally recorded this happening. And, yeah, they spread it around the school. Everyone's laughing at Bakugo. Like, when Bakugo, like, recovers in the nurse's office, like, when Midori just gets into the nurse's office, nurse's office, yeah, Bakugo is furious, and the nurse little looks at the video and starts laughing at him. She says, you just got, you just got fucked up by a gummy bear. <laughs> and Bakugo is even more pissed. And we're going to cut to Zuku, who's just walking, just walking you know, to his house. And all of a sudden, he walks under the bridge to take a shortcut. And there was this sludge villain that, you know, appears, just pops out of the sewer and starts trying to wrap around Izuku. But no, Smolsky just pops out of his pocket, just grows bigger, and grows about to All Might size. And Izuku had an admiration to All Might, so he made... It's where Smallski can actually turn into a version of All Might, a gummy All Might. So Smallski goes into his form of gummy All Might, and he starts pummeling the fucking, the fucking sludge villain. Like just one punch, air pressure comes out, just smashes against the wall. Like the gummy has something called, called gummy smash. Basically, he can copy All Might's moves at a lesser degree. But it's all gummy-related stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Literally, the 
the fucking sludge villain is spread into pieces, and he just makes a gummy bottle, like, you know, a gummy bottle of, uh, soda. He drinks the liquid inside of it. He uses the bottle to gather up all the sludge and puts it in a gummy bottle and closes it. And is about to deliver it to the police station, and All Might appears. And he says, I am he. He, he sees the gummy All Might, he's like, Imposter! And he starts trying to fight him. And literally, Midoriya is like, No, 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 this is Smallski. And he's just like, like, All Might stops, is about to like punch the shit out of Smallski. And Smallski is like, just has some candy, candy drops dripping from him. In anticipation of him about to get his shit wrecked. <laughs> and Izuku's like, this is just Smolski. And he explains his quirk. And All Might is impressed. And he says, did you know where the villain is? And he just hands him the villain. He's like, oh yeah, it tried to fight me, but Smolski, he, uh, well, turned into you and beat the shit out of me. <laughs> and he doesn't say it that way. He says, he beat up uh, the sludge villain. And I put it in this. So, yeah. All Might just grabs the bottle and says, I'm on my way. And he says, wait, can you sign my autograph? Sign my book? And he's like, I already did. Look through the pages. And he just looked through. He, it already got signed and All Might left. And all, Midori didn't ask if he could become a hero because, well, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to ask because he knows he can. And he just walks home. He just goes, goes into his house, says, Hi, Mom, Dad. Hi, Barry. Hi, Be hi Cherry. Which, Barry and Cherry are, like, wrestling. Mainly because they're training. And Asashi and, uh, well, Inko are both, like, just looking at them in amazement. Because they're actually copying moves. Which, the Gummy Bears, all three of the Gummy Bears... Can copy moves very easily. Also, Smallski already shrunk into Izuku's pocket again. Izuku goes up to his goes up to his room and plops on the bed and just goes to sleep. And I want to end it right here, okay? So if you like this, please leave as many likes as possible or leave some comments saying that you want this in, this series to continue. And uh, well, I'll catch you next time, I guess. See ya.